That drives us nuts. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> guys, guys, guys! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 pet peeves. Don't butt! Who do you think you're fooling? I just saw you. <laughs> For this list, we're counting down those things that happen in everyday life that, though relatively minor, bother people more than they should. He's talking about please and thank you, they're called the magic words. Number 10. People who don't use turn signals. I f***ing hate that. What? This guy changing lanes without signaling. In modern society, all but a few of us spend a significant amount of time behind the wheel of a car, surrounded by other people in their cars. The only thing that keeps us all safe are the agreed upon rules we all abide by. When did using a turn signal become optional in this country? But sometimes it feels like you are the only person on the road who knows what you're doing, doesn't it? When someone in front of you engages his brakes and begins to turn without using his signals, it's truly infuriating. Also infuriating, people who choose to flip on the signal mid-turn. What's the point? You, sir, are not only a bad driver, you're a bad person. How bad? Everyone around you hates you. Number nine, people who don't say please or thank you. So please and thank you, they're the magic words. Many people would agree that basic manners have eroded over the years, much to the chagrin of many of us. The words you're looking for are thank and you. Put them together, they make a nice sound. It seems reasonable that when someone asks something of you, that they should say please. And if you do aid them, they could at least acknowledge your effort with a thank you. You might at least say thank you. For what purpose, Mr. Scott? What is it in you humans if it requires an over... So when someone can't be bothered to even open their mouth in appreciation of their fellow man, it makes perfect sense that it would arouse the anger of the spurned party, right? It's your job! I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you! That's what the money is for! Number eight, people who cut in line. Is everyone in this line an asshole? Uh, excuse me? Is everyone you just cut in front of an asshole? Uh, no. So it's just you then? As children in school, we are routinely forced to stand in an orderly line. And oftentimes, if we don't respect the integrity of the line or try to cut in front of others, we will quickly face repercussions. We're all getting hot dogs. Well, you think there's two lines and we're all in this line? You're the only genius that got in the other line? <laughs> believe this one? As we get older, there's no one around to enforce the rules. And some people take advantage of that. Hey, there is a line. Well, wait your turn, Ace. Hey, Eddie's little soldier. It's all the same, Mark. Whether they think everyone else in the line is a chump or whether they think their time is more valuable than everyone else's, when someone joins the line midstream and makes your wait that much longer, it's completely aggravating. Hey, hey, excuse me. Hey, hey, no buts. What difference does it make to you? No butting in line. Um, you go to the back of the line now. Hey, give me that. Yeah. Number seven, people who kick or knock the back of your seat. Hey, come here. If you don't stop screwing around back there, this is what I'm going to do with you. Whether in an airplane or a movie theater, when you're trying to relax and enjoy your surroundings and the person behind you kicks the back of your seat, it completely disrupts your experience. That guy wants you to stop kicking his seat. first few times it happens, you can try to chalk it up as a mistake or attempt to ignore it. But once it exceeds that threshold, it's nearly impossible to prevent the irritation from growing inside of you. It's no surprise that over the years there have been many fights that have begun with this inconsiderate act. Shut your trap and stop kicking the seats! We're trying to watch the movie! And if I have to tell you again, we're gonna take it outside and I'm gonna show you what it's like! You understand me? Number six. People who use or correct poor grammar. It's hard to decide which is worse. People who speak or write so poorly they're difficult to understand, or people who jump at the opportunity to correct them. We're not gonna choose. I don't care if Richard Feynman was a purple leprechaun who lived in my butt. <laughs> Penny men. 
And if he were a purple leprechaun, can he forgot to use the subjunctive? If you're trying to make a point and you don't understand the nuances between the various spellings of the word there, for instance, there, T-H-E-R-E, is a good chance those of us who do get it are cringing. In memory of the first Planet Express ship and its crew. Hang on. It shouldn't have an apostrophe. This means, and it is crew. What the hell's wrong with you? On the other hand, if you respond to a grammatically challenged statement just to explain why it's wrong, we all understand you just want everyone to know how much better than them you are. We have unfinished business, I and he. He and me. Don't you talk to me about grammar. We all understand you just want everyone to know how much better than them you are. And yes, we realize the irony of us pointing out poor grammar and how annoying it is when people point out poor grammar. Um, is it because he's always correcting people's grammar? You whom, whom. Sometimes it's who. Yeah, sometimes it's... I don't know what we're yelling about! Number five, people who speak really loudly in public. Loud noises! The group of people who feel the need to engage in conversations or phone calls in public so loudly that the rest of us have no chance to ignore them are absolutely vexing. It's too, you're too loud in here. Yeah, it's disturbing. Yeah, I'm getting yelled at. The rest of us do not care about what you and your friend are up to or what you have to say to each other. Seemingly unaware that there are other people in this world, these folks will never realize how much they annoy everyone around them. Your voice. My voice. You're shouting. How dare you? I have a rela voice related medical condition. The worst offenders of all might just be Bluetooth users, because you can't even see the phone. Excuse me? Who are you talking to? Talking to myself. Well, you're doing it really loud. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You're kind of talking loud yourself. To a person. What's the difference? Uh, I'm actually conversing with another human being. Very oh, really? different than just. To shouting. the outside observer, it's the same level of annoyance. Number four, people who clip their nails in public. I'm a metal chemist? Yes, I am. You're the one that's clipping your nails in the subway. This one is almost inexplicable. There are some things you're supposed to do in the privacy of your own home. Clipping your nails is one of those things. At least, that's how the civilized among us see it. In fact, most of us save this for the bathroom only, as we recognize that no one wants to see that. <laughs> Or even worse, no one wants to be caught in the crossfire of someone else's stray clippings. So when somebody decides to use a public space to complete this private task, or even to bite their nails, it rightfully bothers everyone else around them. So there we go. Nails are ready for guitar playing. And when I vacuum this later in the week, it'll all clean up just fine. How you cut your nails without grip. Number three. People who talk or ask questions at the movies. Hey, can you guys uh, maybe be quiet? Why don't you switch seats with us? If it's bothering you so much, just switch seats. You know what I mean? No, it's just switch seats. And... Sometimes movies are hard to understand. We get it. In those cases, you may feel compelled to interrupt someone around you in the theater so they'll explain it to you. Don't. Those around you may not be as confused as you and probably don't want to hear your questions even if they're not. For all y'all talkers up in here, time to keep it down right now Shh. even worse is if you're just bored or indifferent to the film in front of you and just can't help but comment or yak on your cell phone why is this movie called the hours when it feels so much longer they, they should, should call, call this thing, thing the weeks, weeks. if that's your deal we have one request just leave we came here to listen to the movie not you i mean has this dude even heard a miss on song Put some information up in the frame, bitch! Oh, I get it, yeah. I'm a overexposed mm -hmm. to film. Mm -hmm. Getting a mm -hmm. ferial look. Man, f this sh Can we just go? Number two, people who walk slowly. Better hurry up, Mr. Tucker. I'm coming. When you find yourself stuck behind a slow walker who's impeding your path and is completely ambivalent to it, you may want to snap. <laughs> For some reason, this seems to consistently happen every time you enter a Walmart. If you lack the ability to speed up for any number of reasons, then fine. But if you're indifferent to those behind you, it just pisses us off. While we're at it, people who stop suddenly while walking, or groups of people who are walking in a horizontal line and don't move when there's someone coming, are just as bad. 
Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? Before we annoy you with our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Now, if M-A equals M-G, what does that imply? I don't know. What, but how can you not know? I just told you. Have you suffered a recent blow to the head? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that it's 825? Precisely. Damn. I'm late for school. Number one, people who chew loudly or eat with their mouths open. There's nothing more annoying than when you're trying to enjoy a meal and you can hear or see every bite someone else is taking. Whereas many of the pet peeves on this list are based on your reaction to someone else's reasonable actions, this one is more about other people lacking table manners than you being a crazy person. Damn, little lady. You so can't put it away. <laughs> We will always be disgusted by the sound of someone chewing loudly, be it food or gum. Spit. And don't even get us started on how icky it is to see your chewed up food bits in your mouth or on your lips. Gross. Just gross. I'm dead sexy. Look at my sexy body. Do you agree with our list? Oh, yeah. What's your biggest pet peeve? <laughs> hey, stop it! For more not so annoying top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And if you think I'm kidding, just try me. Try me. Because I would love it.